Okay, so if you follow our channel, you know that we talk a lot about swing mechanics, we talk a lot about mental approach, we cover everything hitting. And I wanna give you an actual in life, real life example of swing mechanics and how your thought process can literally change the way you swing the bat. So, real quick, we talk all the time about, I won't hit you, don't worry. We talk all the time about how we want our barrel to be slightly up through the hitting zone and from the inside. So we wanna be behind the ball on playing with the pitch. And you have players that, you know, some players do that really well. Some players swing way too much downhill. Some players swing way too much uphill. And there's all different levels of in-between that players swing like. So here's a real life example of how a thought process can change the way you swing. So I was in Georgia last week. Maddie's playing in an all-star game. Now he's been hitting great. He's hit really well most of the season. Mom FaceTimes me. I'm down in Georgia, she FaceTimes me, and she says, oh, Matty just struck out in his first at bat. His swing looks terrible. She's like, it, it just looks bad. I don't even know what's wrong with it. It just looks horrible. So I said, okay. She, had a, she took a video of it. She sent it to me. I looked at it. I could see what he was doing wrong. He has a natural tendency to be a little bit too much up through the ball when he's not going well. When he's going well, he's pretty good. He's behind the ball, his barrel's slightly up through the zone. When he's not going well, he gets a little long, he gets under the ball, and he gets too much uphill. And so on this particular day, that was definitely happening. His hands were dropping, and he was working way uphill, and he was under the ball and long, and he just kept swinging under the ball over and over and over again. And mom starts freaking out. So I look at the video and I tell her what to tell him. And what did I say? Come a little closer, because only I have the mic on. You don't have to talk like right into my microphone. Well, what did she tell you? She told me to hit a hard ground ball to the second baseman and that I was getting too far under the ball. Okay, so she went up to him, and I didn't even tell her to say, you're getting too far. I just said, go tell him to hit a hard ground ball at the second baseman. He's a lefty, that's all I said. The reason I said to the second baseman is because he'll generally be a little bit late. Sometimes when he gets long, he'll be late, he'll catch the ball too deep, and so I usually, one of the things I'll tell him is to hit the ball out front. But what I really wanted him to do is I wanted him to feel a hard ground ball to second baseman to force him to stay above the ball, right? So that he's not long, he's not underneath. I could have said, keep your hands high or keep the barrel above the ball and got into all of these things that I want his body to do, but in the middle of battle, in the middle of the game, the easiest thing I think is just to keep things external, outside, get outside of your body. And so by telling him to hit a hard ground ball at the second baseman, his body will figure out, okay, what do I have to do to be able to hit that? And so he probably felt a little bit more like this. He probably felt like he was gonna hit the top of the ball a little bit more. So by getting him to think that hard ground ball to second base, what happened the next at bat? The next at bat, I got up after she told me to hit a hard ground ball to the second baseman. Yep. And I swung like more, like trying to get on top of the ball more, and I hit an inside the park homer to left field. Yeah, he hit a rocket shot to left field, past everybody, to the fence. He called an inside the park homer. It was really a triple with a throwing error to third, but that's okay. Big hit, right? Then the next at bat gets up, hits another rocket. Did you get a, was that a homer too? Triple. Triple, okay, the next one was a triple. So all of a sudden, he starts hitting these rockets all over the place, and Laura sends me the video, and his hands stopped dropping, his barrel stopped dragging, it stopped working too far under, it was shorter, it was behind the ball, and he's just hitting these rockets all over the place. He never hit a ground ball to second base, even though that was his thought process. I did, I hit a line drive. The time I got a triple on my second at bat, I hit like a line drive right past the second Yeah, base. but it wasn't like a ground ball to the it second base. It wasn't a ground ball, but it was all over his head. A line drive, yeah, yeah. You hit a line drive, you pulled it, right. But what I'm saying is he never hit a ground ball to the second baseman, even though I told him to hit that. But what you did do was you stayed above the ball better, you stayed shorter, you didn't get under the ball, and you started just hitting rockets all over the field. And then mom started calling herself Coach Laura after that, yeah. taking credit for all the success. I, was, I wasn't gonna take any credit, I was just gonna say, no, no, it's all him. But then I said, no mom, um, who's the one that gave the advice? So then the next game, <laughs> when I was in Georgia again, she told him 52 times, remember, daddy said hit a hard ground ball to second base. Now here's the thing, and this is where baseball gets interesting, is that next game, he might not have had to think hit a hard ground ball to second base, right? I didn't. Exactly, so like things change. And so I think the main thing I wanna get across in this video 
is that your swing from day to day will change. Some days you might be too downhill. Some days you might be too uphill. Some days you might be locked in and be perfect, right? And so it, it is always changing. Now, people have preferences. Like some people, like I said, with him, he'll be more up when he's going bad. He'll almost never be too much down, right? And, uh, and players can be the opposite. But the key is, is to, if you're able to, one, an easy way, read the ball flight. What's the ball doing? right? Where are you missing the ball? Are you missing under the ball a lot? Are you missing on top of the ball? If you have someone that can watch, right? Like, so I was able to see the video and I could see that the hands were dropping, he was getting under, right? That's where it's valuable, whether you're a parent or a coach or as a player. Like one thing I'm trying to teach him, he's only nine years old, is to be able to make those adjustments on his own. So like we don't have to run over and tell him all the time. Let's say next game or in a week or in a month, you get up in the first at bat or the, se the first and second at bat and you feel under the ball, under the ball, under ball. What's an adjustment you can make? Hit a hard ground ball to the second baseman. Yeah, so he doesn't have a microphone on, but he said hit a hard ground ball to the second baseman. That works for him on that particular, if he feels like he's under the ball, right? Now that might not work for you, but if you have those same symptoms, that could be something that you can try. And again, it's quick and easy. We're not talking about mechanics or anything like that. Again, you don't have a whole lot of time to make adjustments, but this is how you make adjustments from a bat to a bat. And I, again, I typically feel like in game, you wanna keep it external, especially for young players. Keep it nice and simple. Tell them where you want them to hit the ball. And again, there's a lot of different things. So let's say you have a player that's around the ball and that's hooking everything right? Or pulling off everything, a lefty. You might say, hey, hit me a hard line drive through the shortstop's head. That's going to keep them on the ball better. So I think that's a super easy way. Just tell them where you want them to hit the ball. What direction? Do you want ground balls, fly balls? Do you want line drives? If you have someone that's smashing everything into the ground, maybe you tell them to, hey, if you're going to make an out this next step bat, make it in the air, right? So that's, I think, the best way to go about making changes in game, all right? And kudos to mom for filming, and kudos to dad for being available to give great hitting advice. Kudos to Maddie for putting it in play and raking. How's that I sound? Got a new bat. And he got a new bat. Yep, that wasn't because he got the hits. We don't bribe him and give him new bats no, when he gets hits. No. I, I give him $100 every time he gets a hit. I'm that's just kidding. That's so fake. Yeah, that's fake. I don't do that at all. I don't do that at all. Um, okay, that's all we got. Hopefully that helps you out. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, give it a thumbs up, all that good stuff. Let's go hit some more. We'll talk to you later.